Well, good evening. It is, too. It's a good evening. And uh, perhaps you weren't expecting me to preach to you tonight, but I had that opportunity, so we'll take it. Turn it with me, if you would, to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Good to see all of you. Hey, we've got a good crowd tonight. And uh, I know the pastor's been busy. Everyone's been busy. That's good. Busy is good, as long as it doesn't take us away from the Lord, walking with Him, or from assembling ourselves together, as the manner of some is. And we understand that some cannot assemble with us, so we're glad that some have joined us uh, via uh, Internet. But I'm glad you're here today, and I'm glad I'm here. It's good to be with you. Good to, to as they, some say, good to lay eyes on you, all right? And my, my eyes have been laid on you. That's good enough, all right? They're not too sore yet. In Proverbs chapter 1, we're going to be looking uh, at just a few verses this evening. When we say no to God, what happens when we say no to God? Does God really care? I mean, God speaks to the heart. God shows us something in Scripture. God reproves us and rebukes us. Does it really matter to God? I mean, you know, we're under grace and... Yeah, Lord, forgive me, I, I've done that again. And Let me say this, it does matter to God. We're going to see the seriousness of saying no to God in the last part of this uh, chapter 1 of the book of Proverbs. So are you ready? Buckle up, get ready, and uh, let's just take a look at the Scriptures. Look what it says in verse 20, all right? Uh, Proverbs, I almost said Acts, I'm used to saying Acts from the pulpit here. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. It says, Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief places of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, as we bow before you tonight, I ask you, Lord, to enable, empower. Lord, open our ears, open our hearts to you that you might teach us, that you might challenge and change us, even in the likeness of our Savior. I beg you, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit for your name's sake, Lord, for your church's sake for your word's sake. And Lord, we pray for those who are watching, perhaps even some in the auditorium who don't know you as personal Savior for sure, that they might get that settled tonight. Lord, I pray that we'd not turn from you. I pray we'd not say no to you. It's a downward spiral when we do, and we are accountable to you, uh, even now and at the judgment seat. And so, Lord, we'd ask you to teach us tonight. Teach us from your word for we pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, Pastor Allison has, has once and again shared with us from Proverbs 29.1, uh, He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, and shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. How's your neck tonight? Any neck aches? Beware. When God speaks, and he is speaking. When God speaks, we need to listen. We're going to look at a number of passages that relate to that tonight as we work through the rest of this chapter. But when God speaks, we have a responsibility to say, yes, Lord. We have a responsibility not only just to hear it, but to respond to it. Now, tonight, I could call this when we say no to God, or here's a, here's a condensed uh, title for the message, uh, Four Easy Steps to Remedy uh, a, a, a stiff neck, all right? Four easy steps to remedy a stiff neck. Well, here we go with number one. First of all, we must, we must. Did you catch that part? We must. We must listen to his call. God is speaking. God speaks through nature, doesn't he? We enjoy that uh, when it's cool enough to go outside and we see the, uh, the trees and, and uh, the browning grass and uh, at least we don't have the fires like some places do. Uh, but when we see the nature, we, hey, God speaks through nature. God speaks through the preaching of his word. God speaks through 
those we fellowship with, God speaks through circumstances. God speaks, and God is speaking. Here's the question. Are you listening? And that's the key. Are you listening? Are we listening to him? Has God been speaking to you? Hey, he has, and he is, more than once, many times, many ways, just continually. How does he speak? Well, we're going to be checking some passages out. But uh, again, look what he says in verse 20. He says, wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Now, some say this is even the, the, the person of Jesus or God, uh, God the Father, and he's, he is wisdom personified. Of course, we know that's the Lord Jesus for sure. Wisdom personified, we see that in, in uh, Proverbs chapter 8, Proverbs chapter 9. It's the very person of God. He has wisdom. I know some people who have wisdom of the world. That is, they know how to do things. Uh, they seem to be able to get around and uh, they influence people and, and uh, they have answers. Uh, I have some, some acquaintances even in this church. They seem like walking encyclopedias, all right? And uh, s some give you answers you didn't even ask the questions about, okay? I mean, they know. It. <laughs> you, and uh, if I have a question about something in particular, uh, I weigh out my... Uh, uh, the price I have to pay to listen to it, but then I, I ask the question, and I get an answer, and I get more answers, and I more answers, okay? Now, that's worldly wisdom, and sometimes even godly wisdom, but listen, true wisdom, like truth, it comes only from God. James tells us it's pure and peaceable, easy to be entreated, that kind of thing. That's wisdom, the wisdom of God. And so now wisdom we have here is crying in the streets. It's not being silent. Wisdom is all about us, and it cries, hey, listen to me. It's God's wisdom. He has some things to teach us. He has some things to tell us. And when we listen, we need to do something about that. We need to act on that. We're going to see that in just a moment. Again, verse 20, wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Uh, not privately, although God does speak to us privately. God desires us to speak to him in a very private way, in a very personal way. Sometimes when we're knocking on doors and we ask the person if they knew they died today, they'd go to heaven. They say, oh, that's, that's private. That's, that's private. Uh, that's, that's personal. And I say, you're exactly right. Thank you for that. It is private and it is personal. But God sent me here to ask you that question so you might get it settled. And it is private and it's personal, but it's also absolutely vital, important that you get that settled. Wisdom crieth without. She utter her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief concourse. That's the open place. That's where people assemble. So God is speaking. Wisdom is speaking. Wisdom is crying out to us. Won't you listen to what wisdom has to say? Verse 21, she crieth in the chief places of concourse in the openings of the gate. In the city she utters her words. Now notice what wisdom says. Don't let the gender throw you off, okay? But wisdom is speaking, how long? How long? There's a concern here. God is concerned on how long we will resist his speaking, how long we will resist him in speaking to our hearts, in leading us, in drawing us, in convicting us. He says, how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Let me share uh, some, let me identify some terms here. First of all, in the book of Proverbs, you have basically uh, four, four types of people. Three of them are unsaved, although the saved can take on those characteristics. Watch out. And that's what we'll be talking about tonight, that we don't want to take on the characteristics of those who don't know Christ as their Savior. But there are, there are basically four personalities uh, in the book of Proverbs and we don't see the, the, the fourth one until we get about to chapter 12. The first one, it was already mentioned here uh, in verse 22. He says, how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? A simple person, you've heard of a simpleton? That's where that comes from. A person, a simple person uh, is simply someone who is, just doesn't have it all together. They, a little bit. They're unlearned. I'll, 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 that's better than saying ignorant or stupid, isn't it? Okay, they're unlearned. I wouldn't say the others. They're unlearned. They, they're easily deceived. They're unmotivated. They lack understanding. A lot of times with youth, uh, people can be considered simple because simply they don't have the, the 
experience and the knowledge and the understanding to do what's required or, or to make proper decisions. So that's the simple person. Let, let me share some verses about this simple person. In Psalm 119, 130, and it gives us, some, gives us some background of what the character is and what God is saying here about the simple person. And, and the question again is, how long, simple person, how long will you love simplicity? How long will you, how long will you go on in your ignorance? Some say ignorance is bliss. <laughs> it only is to a certain point. If mom and dad are going to take care of you, then fine, ignorance is bliss. But you, you get out of the house, and let me say this, you need wisdom and you need God's wisdom. Well, Psalm 119, 130 says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. Praise God for that. It does. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. The simple person lacks understanding, not putting things together properly. All right? You understand how that works. Proverbs 7, 7, And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a, a young man void of understanding. Here we go again. It's understanding. The simple ones just simply lack understanding. Proverbs 14, 15, The simple believeth every word. Gullible. Do you know anybody like that? Gullible? Get on the internet and everything has to be true or it wouldn't be on there. <laughs> or watch a TV ad and, oh yeah, that's right, or watch the news these days. And it doesn't matter what station you watch. Gullible. That is, whatever someone says, yeah, that must be true. That must be right. Even if it's obviously wrong. Listen to what he says in uh, Proverbs 14, 18. It says, the simple inherit folly. That is... Uh, they're going to inherit some interesting situations. They're going to have a time. Proverbs 27, 12 says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil, but the simple pass on and are punished. So that's the simple person. And again, wisdom is asking the question, how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long will you go on in ignorance? How long will you love that? How long will you go on and not have understanding, the understanding of God? Now, we're, we're building a foundation here for the rest of the message, so stay with me. Are you with me? Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> All right. Some of you are, there are, are too. Here's the other person. Not only the simple person, but the scorner. Now, we've all come across scorners. A scorner is one full of pride. And that's what motivates the scorner, is the pride. He ridicules. He ridicules truth. He ridicules righteousness. He's a mocker of anything good. Um, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the who? The scornful, the scorner, the one who mocks. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Well, we won't go all the way through Psalm 1, but we understand the scorner is the, is the one that the believer shouldn't be, uh, be around. He says in Proverbs 334, Surely he scorneth, he scorneth the scorners and giveth grace to the lowly. That indicates something. The scorner is not lowly. He's not humble. He's someone filled with pride, filled with self. His motivation is whatever can advantage him. All right? You, you understand what the scorner is. It says uh, in Proverbs 19, 25, Smite a scorner and the simple will beware. So the person without understanding, the simple person, when he sees the scorner, when he sees a scorner, a scorner corrected, uh, or smited, but punished, uh, the simple person takes, takes notice and, and shapes up. All right? And the scorners need that. Proverbs 19, 29, judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the back of fools. Now, that's the next one, fools. So we understand the simple person is simply someone who's, who, who is unlearned, easily deceived, unmotivated, lacks understanding. The scorner is one who is filled with pride, he ridicules, he's uh, against truth and righteousness, he mocks anything that's good. How about the fool? These are different, you understand, these are different. And it's almost in stages. You have the simple, then you have the scorner, and then, uh-oh. Now you've gone over the limit. Now the fool, because Psalm 14, 1 says, The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Now that... Uh, that's, that's more than foolish, isn't it? That's, that's God's definition of what a fool is. Stay with me now, listen. The fool hath said in his heart, 
There is no God. Listen to what Proverbs 9.13 says. A foolish woman is clamorous. Not only is she simple, she knows nothing. The fool, the one who says, no, there is no God, or the fool has said in his heart, no God. You see, that's where Christians play into this matter. We can act the fool. We are not fools. We can act the fool. We can be scornful. We can be very simple-minded, which is negative. That's not a positive. That's not a good thing. The fool. It says, the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. A fool layeth open his folly. It's abomination to fools to depart from evil. I'm not giving you all the references just to save some time. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. The folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin. Well, there's some politicians that fall into this, I think. But the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. A fool despises his father's instruction. You get the idea of who a fool is now. Hey, we have three bad characters here. We have, some, we have three characters whom wisdom himself, God himself, cries and says, How long will you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Well, we're going to get the answer in just a moment. Because remember, we're talking about, hey, when we say no to God, what can we expect from God? Well, we're going to see a whole lot in just a moment. Here's one more person we need to identify for the book of Proverbs. This is for your future study, and that's the prudent person, the prudent man. He's someone who is wise. He's well advised. He's shrewd. He's diligent in his work. That's what we need to be. That's the one we need to be uh, developed into, the prudent man, the one who fears God, the one who seeks God, the one who follows God, the one who follows truth and loves truth, the one who corrects the simple and the scorner uh, and the foolish. Now, Scriptures say a prudent man covereth shame. He doesn't hang his dirty laundry out in front of everybody. When there's shame to be covered, confessed and forsaken, he does that. He does it quietly and secretly to keep the testimony of Christ in his life. A prudent man conceals knowledge. He doesn't just open up and blab everything that's, that's there. Matter of fact, the scripture's clear on that. If we hold our tongue, if we hold our peace, if we don't speak out, we're considered wise. And although a prudent man may know the answer, he doesn't give the answer unless he's asked the question. Ha, huh, figure that. The prudent man, stay with me. It says the wisdom of a prudent is to understand his way. The prudent man looketh well into his going. The prudent are crowned with knowledge. He that regardeth reproof is prudent. When he's reproved, he takes it. He takes it right. By the way, uh, when, you're, when you're reproved by God or you're reproved by man, take it the right way. When your feelings get hurt, it reveals your pride. That's a scorner. When your feelings get all hurt and you oh, I've been offended. Well, that's your pride that's been offended. That's a good test for your heart. It's a good test for your attitude. And you're, hey, if you have an attitude, you might become an attitude. All right? You watch it. You're not a dude before God. He wants to humble you so he can use you. He wants to use us for his glory and Pride goes absolutely against his grain. It goes against his working. He says, he that regardeth reproof is prudent. The wise in heart shall be called prudent. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge. The prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself. The prudent man. Now, let's move on with the verse. How long? How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity and scorners delight in their scorning? And fools hate knowledge. Verse 23, turn you at my reproof. There's the answer. God wants a repentance. God wants a turning. A turning in their hearts. A turning in our hearts. When we take on the characteristics of the, of the simple, uh, of the scorner, of the, uh, of the foolish. When we take on those characteristics, God wants us to turn. He says in verse 23, turn you. If you turn that around, that's a U-turn. And that's what repentance is. It's simply a U-turn. In our thinking, in our heart, in our attitude. We're going one way and now we're, we're going another. 
He says, turn you at my reproof. And notice what he'll do. I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. And that's his Holy Spirit. That's the job of this Holy Spirit, isn't it? He re- brings to memory the verses that we've studied. Have you, have you ever been in a situation where you're sharing the gospel with someone or you're sharing scripture with someone and all of a sudden out comes a verse that you never memorized but you've read it before and where'd that come from? That's God's Holy Spirit doing a work in you and through you that he might reach others. God's Holy Spirit. So when we turn from our wickedness, when we turn at God's reproof, he pours out his spirit. He makes known his words unto us. Well, I like that. Now, that's where I want to be. So, number one, I said there's going to be a four-step remedy to prevent stiff necks. Here it is. Number one, we must listen to his call. God speaks. God is calling. We have to listen. In 1 Kings chapter 19, remember Elijah? God, he's, he's, he's left Mount Carmel. He's defeated. He thinks he's the only one left in the, in, in the nation that hasn't uh, bowed his knee to, to Baal. And, and yet God reveals, no, there's, there's 7,000 who haven't bowed the knee to Baal yet. And uh, he's, he's got the uh, humdrums. He's, he's down in the dumps. And God says, no, I'm going to speak to you. But notice how God speaks to him. And God uses the wind and, and crashes the mountain and breaks rocks with the wind. And this is what he says. He says, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, well, these are powerful things. The wind, wind strong enough to to break rock and and bring down a mountain. That's, that's, That's some strong stuff. And the earthquake and the fire, very powerful. God's voice wasn't in that. He says, and after the fire, a still, small voice. You see, so many times we look for the spectacular and it's the normal day-to-day things God is trying to use in our life to perk our ears, to make us listen, to open our hearts, to speak to us in a clear way. John 10, 2 says, But he entered in by the door, he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, now listen, and the sheep, listen, hear his voice. If we're his sheep, we're going to hear his voice. He calleth to his own, his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, listen, for they know his voice. They hear his voice, they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but they'll flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. My sheep hear my voice, he says in John 10, 27. And I know them, and they follow me. Now, what kind of voices are we hearing? <laughs> well, the unsaved would say, yeah, you Christians, you hear voices. I said that. Uh, Brother Dennis Wooten, when he was witnessing to me, I was his training officer with the, at the police academy, and uh, he said, Larry, has God ever spoken to you? Have you ever heard God say anything? And I said, no. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> He said, uh, God speaks all the time. And I said, oh, oh, okay. And uh, I thought, boy, uh, we'll change the subject here. Maybe we'll get a call. Maybe something will happen. He says, now, he says, he pulled out a Bible out of his shirt pocket. He says, here's how God speaks. And I said, now, what do you mean by that? He says, hey, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Our spiritual ears have to be tuned. And if they're not tuned in practice, we're not going to be hearing. If we're not seeking God with all of our heart and looking and expecting him to speak through his word, through situations, through different people, then we'll miss his message entirely. By the way, this is the main one right here. He's given us his word from cover to cover. This word has been preserved perfectly for us, word by word. And this is what we're to follow. Now, when someone says, you know, I I saw a... Uh, I had a vision of, uh, of God or a vision of Jesus sent my bed or something like that, I'm going to say, hey, let's just go back to the word of God. Let's just let God direct our steps. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Let's trust God. So here we have the first, the first step is listen to God's call. Um, the foolish says there is no God. Uh, the scorner is prideful. 
Uh, the simple one is ignorant, but the prudent who's wise. He's well advised. He's shrewd. Which one are you? Which one are you? Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, did you catch that? If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Let me share just a few more uh, verses about this matter of hearing. In, from, from Matthew chapter 11 through Revelation chapter 13, listen. 16 times, from Matthew through Revelation, 16 times there is a phrase given, most of them by Jesus Christ. You'd think if he says it once, we ought to pay attention. You'd think if he says something twice, I mean verbatim, hey, nail it down. We better figure out what he's talking about. We better do exactly what he's saying. But not once or twice, 16 times in the New Testament, Jesus says this. Listen to what he says. He says, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. You got ears to hear? He says that in Matthew chapter 11, verse 15, Matthew 13, 9, Matthew, I'm not going to read all the, the, the passages, 16 times. He says, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew 13, then shall the righteous shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Mark 4, 9, he said unto them, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Uh, Mark 4, 23, if any man hath ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew, uh, Mark 7, 16, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Luke 8, 8, he says, And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. You got ears? Most of you have two. Some of you have both of them that work. <laughs> Some don't have any or very little working in between there. I, I, I'm not talking about the ears, I'm talking about between the ears. Uh, do you have ears to hear? Let me read a couple more of them. I only got halfway through. Um, Luke 14, 35, talking about the salt of the earth. It's neither fit for land nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Revelation 2, uh, through Revelation 3, he says it to each of the seven churches. Here's his verbatim, exactly the same. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Seven times. Finally, in Revelation 13, speaking of the Antichrist, speaking of the end times, it says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Revelation 13, 9. What do you think we ought to do? You think when God speaks, we think we ought to just kind of let it go? You think when God speaks, we ought to just say, well, I'm not so sure. Maybe that's just my own thinking. I don't know that it's God speaking. That's because you don't have an ear tuned to hear, an ear tuned to discern. Take your Bibles. I'm going to make you turn to another passage. Take your Bibles, Hebrews chapter 5. The end of Hebrews chapter 5. Some of you know exactly where I'm going with this. Hebrews chapter 5. I would make you get up and do some jumping jacks, but we'll just turn in our scriptures instead. Hebrews chapter 5, he says in verse 12, he says, For when you time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong drink. Hebrews chapter 5, that's verse 12. Notice what he says in verse 13. Stay with me. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful, mark that word, unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. We're talking about the skill level in the word of God. He goes on. He says, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Not talking about chronological years. Talking about those who have experience. Strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even to those, watch, who by reason of use, they've applied the scriptures. They've used the scriptures. They've studied the scriptures. The scriptures are in their heart. They're in their mind. He says, who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You see, discernment, spiritual discernment, comes by spiritual practice, taking the word of God, letting it work in us and through us. When we come to situations and circumstances, we let God, the Holy Spirit, 
tell us what the right answer is. When we don't know, we search for the right answer. Then we follow that right answer. And then our listening ears are discerning. We have some discernment that we didn't have before. That's how you grow from a babe to someone who's mature in Christ by applying the scriptures, of God, the scriptures to their life. Now, go back to chapter 1. We're ready to jump into this message. Are you ready? It always goes longer at the first and real quick, real fast at the last. Oh, this is the 19th today. I like Psalm 19. I trust you read through the Psalms. I, I try to do the Psalms and the proverb of the day, which is Proverbs 19. But Psalms 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. He speaks. The firmament showeth his handiwork. Day in the day utter his speech. Night in the night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out throughout all the earth and their words to the end of the world. God is speaking. Are you listening? You can look at his creation, look at the stars. You can tell there's order. You can tell where there's, there's a God in heaven who has set things in motion. And he set you in motion to get up and go, to do, to follow his word. Romans chapter 1, verse 19 says, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. If you're looking for God, you'll see him. If you have an understanding of the truth of God, you'll find him, you'll hear him. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Number one, listen to God. Listen to his call. God is speaking. Has God spoken to you from his word? Pastor mentioned Ray Barry in a, in a recent message, and I can remember Brother Barry is, was just a, he was a, very encouraging to me, and it was a challenge to me, because every time he'd see me, he said, Brother Nelson, what'd you get from God's word? What's God been saying to you? And I'd have to give him an answer. <laughs> that wasn't easy sometimes. Did you read your Bible today, brother? What did you get from God's word today? So I was prepared the next time around, and the next time, and the next time, and the next time. Boy, it would help me. It encouraged me. Listen, we must listen to his call. Not only that, let's read on. He says in, he says in verse 24, watch out, watch out now. We need to obey his counsel. We listen to his call, and we obey his counsel. You'll get a stiff neck if you don't. You'll be rejecting God if you don't. You'll be saying no to him if you don't. You listen to him, and then you obey him. We listen to his call. We obey his counsel. Verse 24 says, Because I've called, and you refused, I've stretched out my hand, and no man re regarded. But you've said it not, at nothing, all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. I don't want to be in that boat, do you? I want to be in the boat where I can find him. I want to be in the boat where I can walk with him and talk with him. I want to be in the, in the boat where I'm pleasing to him. Where the things that I say, the meditations in my heart, my attitudes, my actions, and the words that I speak are pleasing to him. I was studying through, just looking at uh, Isaiah chapter 6 today, and Isaiah says, oh, woe is me, I'm a man of, as he saw the Lord as on his throne, he says, oh, I, I'm a man of unclean lips, and of a people of unclean lips. And the angel then and I took the coal from the altar and touched his lips and said, now you're purged, your, your, your sins, your, your iniquities are gone. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is, this is the prophet Isaiah. I wonder how much he'd been cursing that day. I wonder how, how many bad things he had to say that day. Probably nothing. But he knew his heart, didn't he? You see, so many times we think, hey, I'm okay. And guess what? We're no okay. We're not okay. That's no okay. That's a new word for some. We're not okay. Because we get so used to the stink of sin in our lives, we, get so, we, we see the filth of the world around us. We say, hey, I, I'm, I'm squeaky clean compared to that. 
Well, compared to that, you might think you are, but Isaiah knew who, who he was, and he was a person of unclean lips and of a people of unclean lips, standing for the holiness of God. We need to listen to his call. We need to obey his counsel. You said it not, all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. Uh, I go back to the passage in Luke 6.46. And I'm challenged with that, have been um, since I first came across this, these verses in, when I first trusted Christ. And why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? That's a good question. Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Hey, we need to obey his counsel. It's not good enough to hear it. We need to do it. James tells us that clearly. In James 1.22, but be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. In chapter 2, he says, even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. He says in, in verse 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, and that's true. You have a body and the spirit's departed from it. It's dead. So faith without works is dead also. Don't have dead faith. Have living faith. In Luke chapter 11, listen to what this woman said to Jesus. I thought, it's, this, is, this, is, this is winter. And it came to pass in, in Luke 11, 27 and 28, it came to pass as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which, which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Mm. Now here at Madison Baptist Church, we hear the word of God. And here at Madison Baptist Church, we need to keep it. We need to keep it. So if we're going to not say no to God, we'll do a double negative there. If we're going to be pleasing to him, if we're going to live a life that's productive, if we're, if we're going to be that one who is prudent, and not a simple or a scorner or a foolish, then we're going to listen to his call, we're going to obey his counsel, and listen, we're going to heed his caution. Almost there. We're going to heed. That means pay attention. That means listen attentively. We're going to heed his caution. Notice what he says next. He says in verse 29, For they, that, for they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel, they despised all my proof, therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Well, that's an interesting statement. Taking heed. Listen, Job says this, even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. God is telling us right here in Proverbs 1, Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. I, I, the pastor mentioned this morning, before this morning's message, uh, that this pandemic, we need to consider something. God's trying to speak. And God's trying to tell his church that we need to change our ways. We need to, to not only <laughs> listen to his call, and obey his counsel, we need to heed his caution. Because so many times when we think we're doing right, we're not doing so good, and we're going to be filled with our own devices, filled with our own ways. Proverbs 14, 14 says, The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. Jeremiah 6, 19, Behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts. Does God... Mind about our thoughts? Well, he says so in, in, in Jeremiah 6, 19. Even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor my law, but rejected it. Jeremiah 17, 10, after he talks about the heart, the deceitfulness, the deceitful heart that's wicked above all things, he says, I, the Lord, search the heart, I try the reins, to get, give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. That's not talking about at the judgment seat. That's talking about right now in the land of the living. Galatians says, <laughs> six, Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. Are you with me? So, 
If we're going to be pleasing to God, we're not going to say no to God. We're going to prevent a stiff neck to God that shall suddenly be destroyed, and with that without remedy. If we're going to prevent that, we listen to His call, we obey His counsel, we heed His caution. Notice what He says in verse 32. He says, For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. This is interesting. Think through what it's saying here. The turning away of the simple, the simple, the, the, the one who just doesn't have it all together, the one that's two fries short of a happy meal, the one that's just, just, making, just getting by and doesn't really understand what the situation, he turns from the way. And it says, For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. Others will follow. Well, who is it that's going to follow? Well, let's see what else he says. And the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Psalm 37 and Psalm 73. Fret not thyself because of evildoers who prosper. Hey, the prospering of the wicked, it turns many away. Hey, he's doing okay. He doesn't have any bands in his life. He's, he's not got any problems in his life. I, I, and he doesn't love the Lord. It seems like those who love the Lord go through the worst. That's because God wants to purify our faith. He wants to test us and try us and prove us. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. He's talking about the scorners. That's the one he left out. Verse 33. Here's the last one. Listen to his call. Obey his counsel. Heed his caution. Listen. Trust his care. Trust his care. Is God trustworthy? Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's trustworthy. Look what he says the last verse. Verse 33. He says, Whoso hearkeneth, unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. I like that. I'm going to close with one more passage. Turn with me to Psalm 50. Psalm 50. A companion passage, if you please. Psalm 50. Look at verse 16. <coughs> Psalm 50. Boy, it's tough when you've got to cough with this COVID around. <laughs> You're afraid to, afraid to make a move. I was, in a, I was in, a, in, a, in a shop the other day, and I felt a sneeze attack coming. I thought, man, what am I going to do? <laughs> I had the mask on. I thought, I'm going to make a mess. <laughs> what do you do? Well, I had to leave the store is what I had to do. And boy, I, I hacked a few times and came back in. I was okay then. Uh, Psalm 50. I'll get there. You've probably beat me to it. Look what he says in verse 16. He says in Psalm 50, verse 16, But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that, that thou should take my covenant in thy mouth? Talking about the, the unrighteous. In Romans chapter 1, the, uh, holding the truth in unrighteousness, well, there's, there's the example right there. The wicked taking God's covenant in their mouth. Verse 17, Seeing thou hatest instruction, and casteth my words behind thee, when thou sawest the thief, thou consentest with him, and hast been a partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue framest deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. By the way, that, that, that bothers God. We don't be speaking against our brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. I thought that I was altogether such as one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Wow, there's a psalm for you. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. I truly believe those who don't know Christ, but they're living as godly as they can, and they're seeking the God of heaven and the truth, God will show it to them. God will bring it to them. God will reveal himself to them. How are you doing tonight, my friend? Listen, we don't need to turn from God. We need to turn to God. Amen. We need to seek him with all of our heart. We need to have a heart that that follows him, listening to his call, obeying his counsel, heeding his caution, trusting his care. Are you? Is God speaking? Some might say, no, God's not speaking tonight. Why not? Why not? Maybe it's not that God's not speaking. Maybe that we don't have our ears tuned
to listen and to hearken unto him. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We'd ask you that you'd take it deep. Would you, Lord, send conviction and of sin and of righteousness and judgment to come. We thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that we have in Proverbs. Thank you, Lord, that you're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We commit uh, your word to our hearts tonight. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.